Are you here? If you are here, just know that we truly appreciate you. Thanks for tuning into the Paul Leslie Hour. We are honored today to present Paul's interview with Lucy Buffett and Mac McAleer. This interview with Lucy and Mac was recorded at Lucy's Restaurant, Lulu's, at Homeport in Gulf Shores, Alabama, March 10th, 2007. It was originally broadcast on the radio during the Stars Fell on Alabama Festival. Lulu's is a place renowned for fun, food, and music. No doubt many of you have heard the sad news about Jimmy Buffett, Lucy's brother. Food, fun, and music were a big part of Jimmy's life as well. We were heartbroken to hear about Jimmy's passing on September 1st. If you've been listening to the Paul Leslie Hour for a while, you know how many people and events from the Jimmy Buffett world have been covered here. And some of you know Paul's very first broadcasts were heard on Jimmy Buffett's Radio Margaritaville in 2003. To honor the troubadour of the tropics, we're bringing out this interview with his sister Lucy and brother-in-law Mac. You'll hear in Lucy's voice something of her brother. Oh, you'll recognize the same joyous spirit and childlike enthusiasm. Carson Forrester, a listener of the Paul Leslie Hour and a boat builder, commented the other day on Paul's Instagram. He said, heartbreaking, Paul. Keep the stories coming. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that's what we're going to do. If you would, please subscribe to the Paul Leslie YouTube channel. And remember to hit the bell. Bing, bing. We'll keep the stories alive. And with that, I think we're all ready to listen. Here's Lucy Buffett and Mac McAleer on a beautiful coastal day. We're sitting here at the bar at Lulu's at Homeport. Life is good. There's a nice breeze over the water. Some nice tunes in the background. And uh, there's a number of people here. My friend Wesley, uh, Miss Lucy Buffett. Mr. Mac McAleer. So, I'd like to, uh, uh, first of all, thank you for taking the time to do this. Oh, you're welcome, Paul. I mean, this is a big, this is one of our biggest days of the year when the parrot heads come in. It's always been, they started this the year I opened Lulu's, which is uh, eight, we just celebrated our eighth anniversary. So, they have been very instrumental in always jump starting our season. And back in the old and very, very lean days, it was well needed and appreciated. <laughs> and still is. And still is, by the way. <laughs> it looks like everything, I mean, there's a lot of people here. There, it's it's probably around uh, maybe a thousand people here today. Yeah. The 500 parrot heads came on those buses that came across. And in the, in the very first time they ever came, it was like one bus. And I don't know how many, and we were, and I was out there doing the cooking, scrambling, and everything. But it's been, it's been great, and I, it's, you know, I love the parrot heads. We all love the parrot heads. <laughs> they certainly are dedicated. Uh, I wanted to know how you got the idea to open a restaurant. Was was, like I guess most families, mine especially, food is a real big important thing. I mean, it brings people together. That's a big important thing in our family, honey. I'm telling you, we gauge. I mean, we. we I know that Jimmy will travel like he'll take a detour of 200 miles in his plane because there's a good oyster load somewhere. Um, like right I, here. Like right here. Uh, our family, we love food. For me, it's my art form. I love, you know, he sings and I and I cook. So. I had been working in Hollywood, and my parents were very ill, and I was burnt out, tired, and broke, and thought, gosh, is this all there is, and came back and was kind of synchronistically offered the opportunity to to open this little waterfront dive, and I thought I could sell some cheeseburgers and, you know, and write my book on the front porch, and that sort of was the beginning, and I did, and um, I've, I've yet to write my book, and we sell, I don't know, thousands of cheeseburgers. Uh, I wait now. You're, you're gaining on the book. I'm gaining on the book, though, baby. Thank you. I'm gaining on the book. Um, have you thought of, I, I think I read somewhere that you had thought about writing a cookbook. Yeah, that's the book I'm working on. The yep. book I've been working on for many years. But, you know, things happen like this. And um, 
or the new menu has to get out or whatever. I'm gaining on the book. The book will be completed by the end of the year. It's very, it's getting very, very close. Yeah, I just need some time where I'm not, I need some very small content. Unlike Jimmy, I can't do 18 things at one time anymore. I have to do one thing at a time. No, so. you, you don't do 18, you do 12. I do 12 at a time. He does 18. <laughs> Uh, there's a lot of great music that comes through here. A lot of really good entertainers, uh, good songwriters, good performers. I was wondering, the, the people that you have come play here, has there been any musicians that really caught your eye and thought, wow, that, that kid's got talent? Or Well, when we have, especially during songwriters, and um, our general manager, Johnny Fisher, or his, his originally, originally before he came to Lily's, he was at the House of Blues in New Orleans, and so he was very, very plugged into the music scene. So we pull a lot from his wealth of knowledge. Plus, there's a lot of local talent that's really great here. There's um, uh, what's the name of the group? But I, I see, I know them by different names. Raul, what's Raul's group's name? The Relics. I love the Relics. It's Raul and Bud Smith. He's a he's. At, well, Wes Loper. Wes Loper is one of our favorite sons. And actually, Mac, my husband, is, has taken Wes into the studio and actually produced an album with him. So, he, Wes is like legendary around here. Um, uh, Adam. Adam's one of our real favorites. And then when Mac and I were in Tallahassee with Jimmy, um, we ran into, we were backstage. I mean, we were talking to the band and. I think Mac McAnally's going to come through on his way, do a little gig somewhere, but he's going to stop by. And um, Jim Mayer is going to come by and, and do a little thing here at, at Lulu's. For so, the kids. For the kids. Yeah. Very nice. So some, sometime in May, I think. I don't know. Check the website. I don't know. <laughs> you know, I really let everybody else do, do all of that now. So tell me, living in Gulf Shores, what's the best part about this area to you? The best part about living on the Gulf Coast mainly because I'm here, but I still live closer into, we still live more near Fairhope area. It's 18 miles right around the coast. Right. We live on the water on the river. The best thing has always been the shrimp and the crab meat and the oysters for me. <laughs> That's it. Uh, but yesterday, actually, was it just yesterday? No, day before yesterday, we took our boat out. Mac, Mac builds boats, and, and we took one of his boats out and anchored and watched the sunset and had some red wine and 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 I think we danced to Frank Sinatra on the bow of the boat. Anyway, that that's another favorite thing. And we're Gulf Coast people. It's more. I mean, it's, it's like the Gulf of Mexico. Jimmy says he has said this before that it's the northern border of the Caribbean. He believes that he believes the Gulf of Me that the Gulf Coast is the northern border of the Caribbean. So we're we're sort of water people and water people are have a little bit of that lunar craziness. You know, I lived in North Carolina for around twenty years. And I came from Mobile Bay originally. And when I finally got back down here, the feeling is so different. And I, I long to come back to the water. It's, um, I think that's the way it works. People, people that are water people that come from the water return to the water. Yeah. Even if we have to rebuild over and over again, which we have. I was flooded seven times, but it was a mere inconvenience to compared to what a lot of people have been through. So. One thing I've noticed is that people treat you a little different here. People treat you a little nicer. I mean, we're uh, Athens isn't a huge city or anything, but people are kind of you know in a hurry, and it's kind of like you know. Get out of my way, you know. But here, I've noticed people treat you a little nicer. Like when we were at the hotel, people are kinder. It's slow here. Now, don't get me yeah. wrong. We we do like to go to the big city sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> but we like to come home too. We love living here, and we also have to correct our our grammar sometimes oh because we find that we're um, we're living in the country a little too much. But I, you know, it's just beautiful. It's a beautiful area. What Mullen County, what a lot of people don't know, even though it's on the coast, this little sliver here in, in Alabama, it's also the largest county land-wise in the state of Alabama. So there's a lot of great agriculture, and, um, one, and especially in the summertime, wonderful vegetables. Lots of great silver queen corn, new potatoes, lots of soybeans, 
got all kinds of pepper. So we got lots of good, you know, me, I'm about food. I would never have gotten into this restaurant without being a lover of food. And seafood. And our seafood. But we also, like, I have a little, I have a couple of horses, too, that I ride. And so I have, I can ride horses and go out on a boat on the same day. And that's, I want to tell you something, it doesn't get much better than that for this girl. <laughs> Is there any item, I remember last time I was at the old location, I got the big fat fried combo, and I ate it for days. I, 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 it was so much food. Uh, is there, is there any menu, thing on the menu that you have to say is a personal favorite of yours? Well, Paul, the, the big fry basket is still the number one seller, so you should know that. Yeah, and if Mac had his, his birthday was today, but his family, his mother and brothers and sisters came yesterday, and I, one of them ordered the big fry basket at the end of the table, and I was like, my God, what y'all order? Because it's so much. It's still the number one seller. And in terms of what my favorite is, I'm, I'm addicted to Mexican food. So the mahi taco is pretty special and it's coming on up there um the crab melt which is something that, that i invented a long time ago when i was a caterer on a boat up in new york uh, and i made them into little tiny hors d'oeuvres now as a spread that goes on one of our sandwiches that is pretty awesome max favorite is well, gumbo go. i know rarely do i eat the gumbo here but i always eat mac always eats it Jimmy actually comes, he'll be coming from the east coast to the west coast home, and he'll stop here for gumbo. So, I don't know. I'm the, I, it's just because of my own little Mexican predilection. I love anything Mexican. Are there any items on the, on the menu that are family recipes? Well, the gumbo certainly is, and I can cook a gumbo. You know, I can't do a lot, but I, and I certainly can't whistle on tune, can I? <laughs> But I can cook a gumbo with maybe one of my hands tied behind my back. I've been doing it for so long. And that's sort of inspired by my grandmother. Um, and just by, you know, as they call it, time in the saddle. I've, I've cooked, you cook more and more gumbos, you can do it more and more automatically. So that is, um, like I said, the crab milk is something that I've, you know, is an original thing I invented. It's hard to, it's hard to, you know, re rework the shrimp loaf. You, why reinvent the wheel? Just do it better than everybody else. You know. As far as as far as music, just in general, just out of my own curiosity, what what kind of music do you like listening to? Well, I have to. I have to. I cannot tell a lie, and my children would know. My favorite all-time performer of and musician and songwriter in the whole world is James Taylor. Always has been. And of course I love Jimmy, sure. but I am still sort of stuck back there in the 70s. I, now I'm one of those people that uh, my parents warned me about, but I like my 70s music, you know. Although I just bought a whole bunch of, I bought Regina Spector and I, I just, Nora Jones. Nora Jones. Yeah, I'm easy. We were dancing to Frank. I like yeah. easy listening stuff. I love, of course, Maroon 5, all that stuff. John Mayer, love Seal. I love getting down into my. Kim, R&B stuff, when I'm in the convertible by myself. And I was listening to the soundtrack of Dream Girls the other day, and it was <laughs> awesome. That's all I got to say. I know running a restaurant has to take an enormous amount of time, but when you do have some downtime, what do you enjoy doing? Well, what I do, you know, Mac and I got married just a little a year and a half ago, and, and it used to take every bit of my time. And then when, when Mac built this, the new building and the new facility for me, um, he up-leveled it to the point where I couldn't do it all, so you have to have good people, and we hired good people. So I'm not here all the time, but any of our off time, we both are very busy, but our off time is going out in the boat. Or sometimes we get in a car and we just say what we, we say explore. We're going to go explore and we just drive. We drive down roads that we we go drive down country roads. And um, I found one of my horses that way. And anyway, that's that's kind of one of my favorite things. I like I, I'm I've kind of gotten addicted to Sudoku puzzles because it <laughs> quiets my mind. I, because my mind's very fast moving. 
I hate to admit it, but I do watch really bad television at nighttime. Las Sometimes Vegas. Las Vegas. <laughs> I have to find out what happened. Um, but that also sort of quiets my mind. Most of the things that we do, I work out. You know, we do all that stuff that's work. We work out. We try to. But that's it. We're busy. We're, we're still very, very busy. We're trying to actually become a little less busy. We're trying to go gently down the stream a little more at this point. Yeah. You mentioned a, a couple of the coral reefers before, and uh, I was just wondering, do you have a favorite member of the coral reefer band? Oh, not in the whole wide world. If I did, would I say, but no. <laughs> <laughs> I would be, I will just say one thing. I'll just say one thing. Well, you know, I personally, I appreciate Max stopping by. I know. Mac he Mac loves Mac 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 We yeah. love Mac Mac now. Yeah. And Ralph wants to come down. I was going to say Ralph is my button. Ralph's my dude. Yeah, he wants to come down. Yeah. Um, maybe, maybe one day your brother might even drop that. Well, maybe Jimmy might. And actually, Fingers was here this past year. Oh, yeah? Yes, he was. He, he had a band and he was headlining. And he came and he did something. It was just absolutely wonderful. Um, what I love about going to a Jimmy concert is all those people are like family now. And as they self admit, they're like, they say, we're just a bunch of old dudes up there having fun. And there's not a lot of pressure, you know. And they're, they they still enjoy what they're doing. They respect each other. You just couldn't find a, a better group of people. Plus, they've worked together for like, you know, years, 20 years. That It's almost, you know, they, they, it's almost time for them to get some gold watches. <laughs> <laughs> not yet. <laughs> Something that was on the news regarding Lulu's was uh, having the viewing parties for American Idol for uh, Alabama's own Taylor Hicks. And uh, since there's an upcoming interview we're going to do with Taylor Hicks, I wanted to ask how you, uh, what made you say that you wanted to have that here? Well, you know what? In the very beginning, someone asked me, they said, have you heard of Taylor Hicks? Way that would be a barge, my commentary. Look out, they might run us over. <laughs> <laughs> um, someone said, uh, this this guy from Birmingham who spent a lot of time down here in Gulf Shores, he's been accepted into the American Idol. Have you ever heard of him? And I said, no, not really. And they said, well, they're thinking about trying to do some, you know, fan club viewings. And I was like, okay, because at that time, I was not real familiar with American Idol. I may watch some bad TV, but that was not one of them. <laughs> so, so as it progressed, and of course he he progressed in the whole competition. And by the way, now Mac and I watch it every Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. I mean, I'm, I, I'm a to we're totally like in it, into it. So as it happened, his his grandmother had started this little club of folks, and she was moving it from from different venues, little bar, bars. She's a, she lives down here. And it just so happened that our venue was able to actually facilitate a big, you know, we could accommodate more people, we could bring a large screen in, we could do something. And as, as he progressed, it just sort of naturally progressed to, and the enthusiasm about it progressed because all of a sudden then, I mean, you know, Alabamians, have, you know, I don't care who you are, you grew up on football and there's this sort of nationalism that comes with if you're Alabamian and wh whichever team you go for. So all of a sudden there was an Alabama boy doing something and all of a sudden it's just like, boom, everybody's around it. So it just evolved and it became the most fun thing. Johnny Hicks, who is uh, Taylor's grandmother, who reminds me a lot of my mother, although she's just a little... No, my mother was savvy, but but ta my mother, it just reminded me of my mother a lot. And and the story she would tell about Taylor reminded me of... The, of the, let me know that he was very respectful of her, his relationship with her, you know? And so I just felt... Um, it just became, and the other thing, Paul, is if it's not fun, it doesn't work at Lulu's. And it became a ball. So we just had a great time, and then to boot, he won. So that's how it worked. We the, just, last, the last night, we got a, uh, a screen, a truck with a large screen in from Houston. Yeah. Johnny brought it in. Put it on the edge of the sand outside, by the marina. 
and before we knew it, we had screens all over. 3,000 people were at this small facility, and they had a fall and celebrated that victory that night with, with their, his grandmother right here. It was incredible. It was just fun. We were able to do it, and and now though, now we watch it. So even though there's not anybody that's like a favorite son or something, we're still we're still gonna when they get down to their final twelve or whatever, we're gonna bring screens in and have Tuesday night parties here. So when someone comes to Lulu's, what's the what do you hope they get out of the experience? This is what I hope they get. And I think we've, we've analyzed this to death, and there's no real answer about why this works because there's so many things. But I hope when they drive down that drive and they see all those palm trees, that they get to come here, that they are waited on, that their food is excellent, and they get to forget their lives for a little bit. And it's a, a Lulu's is about escapism, is what we've come up with. Totally. Don't you think? You know. It, it, it's a Disney program. So the music plays when you open the door. You walk through here, and the escapism starts in the parking lot. As you flow down into the facility and out on the beach, it's um, it's total escapism. And and um, I think people leave all their cares behind when they come here. You know, a lot of people come down this road are from. Missouri and Minnesota, they're from Kansas, they're, they come down this road and they stop right here before they get to the real beach. And what we found is the families that drive down to Lulu's, they go out to the beach and the sand dune that is rebuilt every week. Those kids, that's the first experience they've ever had with a sand dune. They, yeah. They've they never been on a beach, beach. Yeah. And, and that's their first beach experience. God bless them, and that's where they want to come back to. They, of course, mom and dad love that babysitter beach out there, so they can enjoy themselves also. So it, it just works very well. It's very laid back, and with Lucy's incredible cooking, I mean, the, the food here is incredible, and, and the staff are just wonderful. It's, it's truly a great escape for anybody that comes in here. Yeah, you know, because I... It's the first time I've ever worked for myself. I always work for other people. And I am a hard restaurant client, I mean a patron. When I go to a restaurant, I really want good food. I want it done timely. If it's not, uh, I'm patient up to a point, you know what I'm saying? And, it's, uh, and so I really wanted that is the kind of food that the people want. I, I, and while I had like salmon and stuff that people didn't want here, they want the fried baskets. <laughs> so I was like, okay, when I finally figured out what my people wanted, gave them what they wanted. I gave them what they wanted. I wanted it to be the best that it could be. Then you, I put sand out there. The sand is a natural baby. The, the big thing that's different about Liz, it's a family restaurant, but yet everybody has a good time. And so you know, the number one beverage sold here is? Iced tea. <laughs> In volume and in, in numbers of units, I see. Number one selling thing on. And, and during during the season, uh, Lucy waits on 3,500 people every day, from 11 in the morning till about 10 at night. Yeah, that's the, not open any later. Than that. I want people to have fun, and I want them to be respected, and I want them to respect the people that work for me, because too, and and, and my people that work here. They um, they either, this is sort of the criteria, either you like what you do or there's someplace else that really needs you. <laughs> and that is our criteria for my folks. And as soon as it gets to the point where it's really time, and, and most of my folks are real happy, and we got 200 something people, and when they're not, it's really time for them to go to, a, to the next, next step. My last question would be that uh, people will be reading or hearing this from everywhere in the world. I mean, we have people that write to us from Japan. That's amazing, really. You're kidding. Yeah, Japan, <laughs> uh, England. What would you guys like to say to all those people? What would you like to say to the world? Oh, to the world? To the world. Everyone out there listening. Well, to the world, what I've learned, if I have any, any modicum of anything to offer the world is, what I've learned is to live really well, 
and then I say that a lot, and I sign that a lot on my t-shirts. But you know, to live live well and love well, and, and, and that may sound cliche, but I'm 53. I never thought I'd be this old. <laughs> I still think I'm 28, and life, you know. Any moment things can happen, and, and it is such a beautiful thing to live. Just live it well and enjoy where you are. What about you? I'd say take a deep breath, <laughs> world. Yeah. Breathe. Think about it. And let's think about going gently down the street. That's next. Together. Gently and merrily. <laughs> Well, at least not, at least not, um, you know, Mac and, I, Mac and I have many times in our lives, uh, we, we've accomplished a whole lot, but we are certain, sometimes we're paddling upstream. <laughs> sometimes you have to. It's the only way to get. Well, but it's our time to go now. Yeah, it's time for us to go gently now. You're right. Well, I really appreciate you taking the time to do this. Thank you. I, I really appreciated well, this chance. Uh, thank you. It's been fun, and I want you to enjoy it. The, are you off work now? Yeah. Good. You can eat and drink and be merry like the rest of everybody here. I've got here. one question for you. Sure. How was that playing Shark Lager? I have to say, uh, I've had it before, and I like it because there's no aftertaste that you have in a lot of, a lot of beers that are kind of similar like that, you know? There's no aftertaste, and it goes down really smooth. And, you know, it's funny because... A lot of the people I've interviewed have been talking. To, they've been asking and talking about it. It's a popular discussion for some reason. But thanks again. <laughs> okay. Tell me when. Hi, it's Lucy Buffett, and you're listening to Time After Island Time. Have a good day, because we sure are. We thank you and appreciate you dropping in for the Paul Leslie Hour today. You know, you can help the Paul Leslie Hour in our mission to provide independent media content like this by visiting www.thepaulleslie.com slash support. We truly thank you. This is your announcer speaking. Performance of the Entertainer intro song and Corina Corina outro song courtesy of John Primerano. Well, that's it for today. So until next time, be safe and be good. <laughs>